Blessings on blessings on blessings on blessings on blessings on blessings. I'm excited today, Wizzy. I'm Apostle G. Blessings. <laughs> blessings on blessings on blessings. I'm Lady T, y'all. Yes. And it is. It's a wonderful Wednesday wonderful. noon time. Noon time. Noon time. Lunchtime noon time. uplift. So glad that you would join us. Yes. I'm going to go ahead and say our uh, our declaration for for, today. Yep. for, for today. And yeah. uh, for this week, because it is so important that you get this down in your heart. Yeah. So Psalms 118 and 17. Yes. I shall yeah. not die, yeah. I shall but live. live. Yes. And proclaim. Yes. The works of our Lord. Yes. I shall not die, but live. And proclaim Amen. the works of our God. That means that we're going to be a living witness, yes. a living example yes. of what it's like, of what it's like to have a father who heals, yes. of what it's like to have a, a, a father who supplies every need, yes. of what it's like to be connected to abundant uh, uh, supply. Yes. Supply. I shall live. Uh, declare that I will live. In other words, I will thrive. Living is just not being here. It's actually thriving in what God has purposed you, uh, purpose in you, and the reason why you are here. Uh, that means that there are testimonies come, mm -hmm. coming, right? And, and and not only will I live, but I will declare. Mm. I'm going to declare. There are declarations uh, that are ours. There are things that must uh, come out of our mouth. Mm -hmm. There's things that we must say. Uh, let the redeemed say so. Yes. In other words, in other words, for it to happen, I've got to declare it. I got to. I got to say something. If you guys will, if you guys will, start sharing this video today. Uh, uh, I believe that what God is going to say today is literally going to open up the eyes. There's some eye openers. There's some people that have deemed themselves disqualified. There's people that are entering into a zone that they're unfamiliar with mm -hmm. they they didn't they did not grow up in this uh -huh. they're not they have not been religionized which is a great thing but you are feeling the tug of god put yeah put names in the comments comment section so people can come in i first first of all i need you to do something for me i need you to do something for me yes i'm glad i'm reminded i need you to go to my youtube page go to my youtube page and subscribe youtube page and subscribe look on the screen that's where i need you to be right there on the screen go to my youtube page and subscribe i need you to subscribe to my youtube page we need you we need you it's pastor g at network of believers that's our youtube page we need you to go and uh, subscribe hit the subscribe button and when you do that you will get access to these teachings so that you can share it with your family and friends that are mm -hmm. not on Facebook, you can actually text. Mm -hmm. You can copy mm -hmm. the UPC and just text it to them, and they can have access to this word. Many have asked me about that. Go to our YouTube page, our YouTube page. When you get to our YouTube page, I'm going to bring it up again on the screen. Hopefully, you can see it on this screen. There, here it is, Pastor G at Network of Believers. I need y'all to share this. I need everyone that's under the sound of my voice to go subscribe so that you can get notifications. I will begin... To put messages in small, very short messages of, uh, of things that God put on my heart to share. I need you to be able to get to them and get the notification. So if you want, guys, will go subscribe to my YouTube page. Here it is once again, and then we're gonna get into the teaching. Look at it. Look at it. There it is. There it is. There it is. Pastor G at Network of Believers. Go to it and subscribe now. You could do it right after we finish today's teaching now let's jump into something so when monday 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 when we began the, the, this uh uh lunchtime uplift the lord said pray for those people and we're going to remind you again for the people that have restless spirits your spirit is restless right now and the reason being is you are called to something that you're unfamiliar with mm -hmm. you don't have proper revelation on now, I thought I was just talking to newcomers, mm -hmm. but I'm actually talking to people that have been around for quite some time, mm -hmm. that think they have a grasp on, that think they know what God is saying. 
And this platform is a platform of truth. And so there's some things that we have to teach to people that don't know they need to be taught. Mm -hmm. They're trying to teach, but they don't know exactly uh, uh, where they are in their own lives. Now, what the enemy wants, I wasn't going to say this early, but I got to. The enemy wants us to be gifted people, but not instructed people. Mm -hmm. We are so gift driven that once we get an accurate prophecy come to us and we deliver it to people we think we are in line with god once we have a, a accurate prophetic word for people we think we're in line with god watch this i'm gonna help somebody it might they might receive it and they might not but i'm gonna put it out there because once i say it then I, the god is obligated to perform what he said now mm -hmm. we have people that are accurate in their gifts and so they believe that they are accurately operating in line with god mm -hmm. one of the things that i declared i would never do don't, don't want to do is be a great speaker teacher of the word of god watch this and not be able to accurately uh uh uh, uh handle you because mm -hmm. my first ministry is you too many people are looking past the real ministry trying to deal in all these other areas but they won't deal at home and the home is out of order and the enemy loves it. Mm -hmm. And we're accurate in our prophetic words and our dreams and all of the other things, our giftings. But we are not in alignment with God. Mm -hmm. We can't have that in this next flow, in this next generation. Now watch this. Luke 4, 18. Jesus declares, the spirit of the Lord is what? Upon me, Upon me because he has anointed me mm -hmm. and that's an interesting beginning to a text right okay the spirit of the lord is upon you. why is that spirit upon you because he has anointed me because i'm gifted to do something now i need the guidance of the spirit now for the spirit to properly guide me because the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet i got to have the proper proper revelation okay that's why, beloved, you can't believe every spirit because the enemy would love for you to be accurate but not in alignment. Hmm. And your alignment comes as a byproduct of your understanding. Wow. I lived out of a dynamic of old uh, uh, teaching and, 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 and restrictions and all those things. And so now I could be accurate in my guilt, but I was not uh, 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 qualified to be used in the next move of God. I don't want to feel all good about me being gifted and yes. not be available for the next move. Or God says, I can't allow you to handle people because you are not ready to handle. You are good. You Now, now, now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. You can go to church and all those areas and be good, but I can't use you with the with the real kingdom move I'm about to. And I don't want to be, and I don't want to fall subject to that. Hmm. Oh my goodness. Why did the Lord have me saying that? Why did the Lord have Because there's somebody that needs to hear it. Now, I'm praying for the restless spirits. <sighs> you are going through battles in your mind. Mm -hmm. It's causing you to think that you are defeated. When you're only depleted, this is major. This is major. You 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 have assumed that you were depleted. Now, when you uh, go through because you're honest, because you don't know how to play the religious game yet, you just honest. You know, some this ain't right, and I'm having. So you go talk to people that you think have a grasp on what you're trying to get, and they have no idea. When you go tell them about the wars and battles that you're fighting, they think that you're defeated. They don't know that you're not defeated. You are just depleted. Yes, they don't have a proper word to help you put all this stuff in alignment. Because there's so much stuff going on right now. There's so much stuff going on. They don't even know that you 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 you, you run into the wrong person. You run, run into a person that's that's got to give. They know how to speak to them. They know how to prophesy. They know how to do that. But they don't have the proper information how to lead you into. They don't even know how to properly uh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 divide the word of truth yet. They're still. You can tell when they talk. They're saying things out of an old paradigm. It was a. It was a a, a. a word that was thrown in from ages old that don't fit into. You know what I'm saying? The now. The now. And so and so. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. So you are not defeated. You are just depleted. Because you're so gifted at birth from God, you are everything God called you to be before you came out of your mother's womb. Jeremiah, I knew you. I knew your name. Mm -hmm. Not only that, mm -hmm. I sanctified you. Come on. There was a purpose in you. Now, in your flesh, you're going to say to me that I'm not capable of doing what you told me to do. But I'm going to tell you, don't look at their faces because you have everything in you that you're supposed to have in you. Now, watch this. 
what are the who are the faces that Jeremiah will be looking at that cause him to be scared? Hmm. The world, no, sir, no, ma'am. It's those people that are already standing in position that don't know how to properly see that there's something coming in God. So they they will actually cause you to be defeated when you've only been depleted. They 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 will cause you to think that you have lost the battle. You have failed in their mind because they because because of this thing called religion. They religion they care. They'll say that you fail when you're only fatigued My God. because you got something in you that is so strong that is roaring to get out roaring to get out mm -hmm. And, and oh my God, Come Lord, on. thank Come you. On. This thing inside you is roaring to get out. But here's what this thing inside you so strong that is kicking to get out. It does not want to come out and be deluded by your flesh. Mm -hmm. So it has delayed your birthing. Mm. Because you have not been properly handled or talk properly, you got something in you that you know supposed to be out. I know I'm supposed to be doing something great, mm -hmm. but it's delaying. It's been delayed. Why? Because your flesh has not been taught to be disciplined enough not to take what comes out of you and dilute it with your fleshly acts. Mm -hmm. That's why there's a period of time when God says sit down and be taught and discipline yourself. Because the moment he releases what he's got in you and is diluted with what you have been doing, now you lose your effectiveness when it comes to the people you're supposed to engage. Hmm. So he says sit down, sit back. So what happens? In that delay period, what happens is I think I'm going crazy because something inside is so strong. I want to do something great, but I have not disciplined my flesh not my, my flesh yet. My flesh will take over that greatness, and now I'm confused. I'll be high saying the goodness of the Lord today, and tomorrow I'll be on social media cussing everybody out. Mm. Tomorrow I'll be talking about the healing power of God, and the next day I'll be telling everybody I want to cut them. Do you know how many people are right now uh, going through this? Mm. Right now. You are tormented in your spirit because there's great things in you. But the Lord says, I cannot let this come out with that flesh you got, with that uncontrollable flesh, that uncontrollable mouth, that uncontrollable thing that you got that you don't see no need to bring under subjection. Wow. So you are delayed. You are delayed. You are delayed. Your manifestation is delayed. There's something inside you that could create the entire life that you desire, but you've been delayed because your flesh, you won't do it. Your teaching has told you there's no need. Your teaching has told you you good. Be you. Do you. What if the you you trying to do don't align with what God has caused you to be created for? We got to think this thing out. Mm -hmm. That's why when you come here, we're going to tell you the truth. Because it's the objective of God to get you in a position that he can use you. He can use you. Now watch this. Here's what the Lord says to me. Here's what the Lord, I'm going to get back online. He says, he says, he says, yes, there's something inside kicking. And it's me and I want to come out. Have y'all shared me? I want to get out. I want to break out. But I can't because their flesh has not been brought under subjection. Mm -hmm. It has caused a day, delay in manifestation to the life that you know is possible. Now watch this. He says, he says, the greatest challenge of any great one is you have too many great ideas that you want God to finance. Wow. Oh my goodness. You have too, watch this. Come here. Come here. I, I need you to hear me. You have too many great ideas that you want God to finance. I'm speaking straight out of the spirit today. You have too many great ideas you want God to finance. I need you to hear me. I want you to hear me. God says, as a matter of fact, that's all you want him for is his financing. You're not even listening to what he says he created you for. you telling him, I already got it. I've all, I'm smart. I'm a go-getter. I've already got everything aligned. All I need now is the financing to do. He says, that's not what I want. Come on. It's your idea. It's not my idea. Mm. I remember when I first started Network of Believers, we had this conversation. I had found success in my musical ventures at everything I've done. 
every time I'd done something, you know, it would it would bust out. It would be big. Mm -hmm. And so when I started Network of Believers, when the Lord told me that you won't start it with music, I thought that was the devil telling me because that's praise and worship. That's that's everything to me. I know how to do that. Yeah. And the Lord told me very clearly and very specifically. He says to me, he says, if I allow you to build the church you want to build, perhaps you'll get two other people in there that I want in there. You will see no need. You'll get so caught up in your operations and your big ideas, you'll be supposed to look at what I built. Mm. Look at how splendid, how much splendid it has. Look at what I've done. And God wouldn't be getting the glory. I say at the end, but God. Mm. But God, but God, this is what the Lord is saying. That's something inside you so big that want to come out of you now. I'm talking about tricky transitions. We got to get this down, but it can't happen. You're gifted, but the gift never applied to you. It always applied to someone else. Hmm. We cannot go into this next season and let the enemy uh, pull the wool over our eyes because we can have splendor. A, a, a superb church and never affect the people that this word is supposed to go out to. Help it's us. happening today. Help us. I, I, I declare it to you, Revelations 3.20, when Jesus is written in red, says, I stand, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Yes. Door what? Door of the congregation, door of the, of the packed house and knock. That was interesting to me when I delved into it because what did it say? It says, he's standing at the door of the packed house. Has anybody noticed that I'm not in there? <laughs> help us, if help I'm standing us. at the door and knocking, that says that I'm not inside. Now, if it's packed and if it looks good, that means that you're having something but it's void mm. of me. Wow. That's why Paul, Acts 17, go to Mars here where they are in devotion. He said, I see your devotion, but has anybody noticed that you are saying to the unknown God? Where is he? Where, if you don't know him, you don't know if he's here or not. So what he's saying in this season, watch this. He's talking to you that have been called for such a time as this, that got something kicking. Watch what he says. Have you noticed that you have a good idea that you have not included me in? And so now it's caused a delay because I can't let you manifest this with the filter of your flesh because it's going to become something that I never intended for it to be. I'm not taking away it. It, but I'm telling you, I'm a delay because I need you to get some things in line. I stand at the door and I knock. Watch what he says. The packed house, I stand at the door and knock. If any man would hear, right, and open. Now watch this. He's coming to a packed society with many people that's talking and saying and speaking. And he says, I'm coming right to you. Now watch this again. He comes to the door of the church and mm -hmm. he knocks. A church that said they're rich, have need of nothing. That's what he said. The church of Laodicea. You got, you got everything. You got the lights. You got the camera. You got the action. You got the whole package. You say you have need of nothing. Woo. But I stand at that door and knock. And I'm not asking for the congregation to hear this time. I'm asking for if any man, if an individual in the midst of all of this stuff going on that look good can hear this revelation in this season uh -huh. and open up. I'm going to come in and, and, and download, sup means to come in agreement with you and download a strategic plan that's going to change the entire world. That's what God is looking for. So he says, you have this inside you. I'm talking to every level. This is what the enemy wants us to get. As I said earlier, the enemy wants you to be anointed, to prophesy, and to be accurate in your dreams, but never ever walk in the level. Now watch this. Luke 4, 18. It's interesting. Go read it. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Why is the spirit upon me? Because he has anointed me. In other words, I'm gifted. Mm. But I don't have direction. My God. And you don't want someone gifted without the direction of the Holy Spirit. What happens? They reap havoc. Yes, sir. They cause families to break up. Help us, God. They cause people to lose their jobs because I am gifted without the guidance. Beloved, believe not every spirit. Because once you open yourself to God, you also open the door for the enemy to come in dressed up mm. 
like a major move from God. Whew, a major move from God. Thank you, Apostle. Extremely Gordon. dangerous. Extremely yes. dangerous. So now he says, he says, we're going to reframe, going to relook at this picture. Here's a major opportunity. A door is coming. A door is coming that you cannot sabotage. A door is coming that you got to have discernment on. Mm -hmm. Because it's going to come in the form of what your flesh has been begging for. Your flesh can beg for something that your spirit have no desire to be a part of. That's why there's a war between your flesh and your spirit. I'm still talking to people that are in tricky transition. This is a tricky transition. Tricky transition. Because the enemy's desire is to get us back into the norm. Mm -hmm. And God says, I can't have you back into what you call norm. My God. Because I'm going to be left out. And so what the Lord says, I am delaying, I am delaying, I am delaying your manifestation. You see it. Now watch this. Since you are spirit and flesh, spirit, soul, and body, your spirit actually sees what God desires to give. Mm. But God knows that your flesh is not disciplined enough for what your spirit sees. That's when you go into major conflict inside. It's not outside. The major conflict is on the inside of you. It's on the inside of you. So now you get up to say something that the spirit says, but what happens? That flesh takes it over. That flesh takes it over. It takes it over. You know how many times this happened inside major revivals? Hmm. And it seems as if the saints are the only one that don't have discernment. You bring somebody to church with you or to the assembly or to the place to, 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 to get them blessed. And they looking at you. They doing like this. Y'all don't see that God's not in here. <laughs> and now you offended because your friend that you brought to the assembly is telling you, girl, I can't get with that. And you think they crazy. You ain't gonna touch you ain't gonna talk about my man of God. Mm -hmm. Y'all gotta fight. Now y'all can't talk to each other at work because uh, you touch not my anointing, my man of God. We had this conversation lately and our honest so honest so honest about ministry. Then we had this conversation yesterday. Yes. About how we made men of God monsters because they were never called into accountability. Mm -hmm. As long as they are gifted, they are good. Mm -hmm. As long as they are gifted, they are good. Well, that can't happen in this next dimension. It can't happen. So, 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 so. Now, there is something inside you. I'm not telling you that God says it's not there. You have not disciplined. I need you to hear me. There are people for the first time God has opened the door of opportunity to walk into what you have dreamed about. Mm. It, 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 it won't let you sleep. So, what you do? You inebriate it. What is inebriate? Hmm. It's, 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 it's when God says. I'm going to give you something out of, out of the, the gift that you that I created. Watch this. It's, watch this. It's a gift. Like, like me. Watch this. Watch this. Like me. Giving a gift to play an instrument. Mm -hmm. and, and God says, I anointed you for this. So I inebriate it as opposed to wait on God. What I do? I start finding every gig I can get on because I'm anointed to do it. Mm -hmm. And I think, ah. And so, so, so watch this. I have been taught by the enemy, watch this, that are dressed up in a long suit, that, 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 that anywhere I use my gift, the presence of God is there. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Watch this. I'm, I'm helping somebody. But the presence of God is there because you're there. Because when you uh, uh, did your gift, somebody cried, somebody felt good, or you made somebody feel good, and they call you anointed. Watch this. They call you anointed because they cried. Hmm. Well, Here's here's two things that need to be applied to the scenario. Here's two. Here's two. Here's two. Here's two things. Number one, Isaiah says the anointing do what? Destroys, destroys yokes, right? Destroys. Right. Right. It'll destroy the no, It don't collect them. Because mm -mm. there's a saying that the more anointed you are, the more things come upon you. Mm -hmm. The Bible says the anointing what? Destroys. It does not collect. It destroys. That's number one. Number two, the anointing destroys and break yokes. It does not make you feel good or give you a reprieve from the situation. We have been and settled for a reprieve from something when the anointed want to destroy it. Oh my God. 
The anointing wanted to destroy it. But since your teaching says that it's a reprieve, God does not want to give you a reprieve. He want to give you a deliverance from something. And he want to use you to bring deliverance to somebody. Mm -hmm. But you have to say, I'm going for what God wants as opposed to what is presented to mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. That's what I've done. That's what I've done. So in this tricky transition, God has said, I'm pulling you back to what I desire, even if your flesh fight against it. And the people that I send to speak into your hearing is going to tell you the truth. They're not just trying to connect with you. They're trying to get you to the place of truth where you connect with God, even if you're mad at them. Hmm. It's more important that you walk in alignment with God than for you to connect to me. Wow. And so we have to be very honest with you about this moment that God is presenting. Mm -hmm. He's saying to you, I want to give you the life that you dream about in your spirit. But since you can't discipline your flesh, what happens? You're going to go after the acceptable substitutions of life. That's in the church. Mm. That's in the church. Because we have limited information, we call everybody anointed. Mm -hmm. Because they emotionally drove you to a place. Well, when you leave the house with your emotional self, you didn't get anything that destroyed the yoke that you brought to church with you. You leave with it. And now when you come down off the emotional high, what happens? Boom. Now you're confused. Now the enemy has another battleground. What happens? Thought you got this. God ain't interested in you. God ain't God. God ain't that. God ain't. Look at you. You are you you are you you worse off than you ever was. And when you don't have the proper information, you live that dynamic. I guess I am. And so what happens next? Since God didn't deliver me, and since God's not going to deliver me, I'm going to go headstrong into everything that I got. Mm. Everything that tickles my flesh and my flesh feel good with, I'm going into it. That's why you stand on stage, preacher, and you preach to everybody, and the first thing you want after you walk out is a woman. Mm. Okay, Lord. This is tricky transition season. That's why, that's all you want, is, is, is to have relations with somebody. And you say, oh, Lord, how did that happen? Because you did not follow the instruction. You followed what they gave you to follow. We in what is called tricky transition. So, 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 so. oh, my goodness. So, 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 God says, God says, there is something in you that want to come out of you. But he can't let it come out because you're going to dilute it with your flesh. These are major decisions. Some people are going to call me traditional. You know I'm not traditional. You know I think outside the box. I love, listen to me, I love entertainment. Both secular and sacred alone. Both of them. I love them. I, don't, I, I love to go to them. But I don't want us to get this misunderstanding now. Because we need anointing and we need entertainment. Okay. I need you to hear me. Because my life is not always in church. We need entertainment. I can't confuse because there's a moment when somebody going to confuse you and tell you got an anointing and you're going to go into places that require anointing and you're not going to be able to pull the power. I just need you to know that. I need, I need, I need, I need, I need. I need. Listen, I'm going to say something. R&B music the, the traditional the traditional list will fight it, and God says I never fought it. Okay, there's a that, that, that's what it's called. Why am I teaching this? Come on, Pastor. There's things that's called sacred things, and then there's things called secular things. Mm -hmm. God never separated the secular from the sacred. Mm. He separated the sacred from the abominable things. Oh, people don't. I, I, mm -hmm. that, I, okay, I need to teach that whole thing. Now watch this. How do, you, how do you apply this passage? Hear this. Listen to me very closely. Everything that is not uh, uh, sacred is called secular. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. We call every song that is not a church song a secular song. Okay. And God's not upset with it, right? If he only wants sacred things, watch this. Okay, watch this. What you got? Some coffee, right? Okay, so, so there was a commercial on TV, right? It's called... It's called uh, the best part of waking up is what? Folgers mm -hmm. in my cup. And people sung that, right? Uh-huh. That's not a sacred song. Okay. Is God going to send you to hell because you sung it? Mm -hmm. No, we got to understand this. 
This is what the enemy wants us to be pushed into this area where we misunderstand what God wants and where God would allow us to, to enter so he can condemn us on everything. Wow. <laughs> That's what he wants. That's what he wants. That's what he wants. He want to push us overboard because, watch this, watch this. All right, okay, okay, okay. If you guys can see this, this right here, watch this. This, 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 is, this is home plate. No, this is first base. First base. First base. <laughs> I had to sneeze at first base. Now, first base, watch this. This, this is first base. I didn't make an analogy. Okay. Now, now, I just hit the ball. I'm playing baseball. Softball. I think the rules are the same. I just hit the ball. I run diligently. And I slide. Mm -hmm. I slide. And I slide. And I come right there within a hair of the base. Mm -hmm. I got tagged. What happens? I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. All right. Same scenario. I run and I slide. And I go a hair past the base. And they tag me. I'm out. I'm out. So what the enemy desires is for you to be a hair short or a hair too far. It doesn't matter to him. Mm -mm. It doesn't matter. Either way, he's got you where he wants you. My God. And he can reap havoc in your life when you don't understand it. Now let's go back to the teacher. Tricky transitions. Tricky trans. Position. So, so here's what the Lord said. There is something so strong inside. And here's an opportunity. I want to use the word opportunity. Mm -hmm. Because the, the people that don't know God say, if you don't take the opportunity, then he going to send you to hell. Mm. God says, I will love you if you don't take the opportunity. I got to tell you what truth is. I'm going to love you regardless. But here's what happened. You're going to have tormented life. Mm. Because when you have what you have inside you that is already set in motion in heaven for your destiny in the earth, you won't be happy until you hit the mark. That's why sin, the word sin, is called hermatia. What does that mean? What does that mean? I missed the mark. Mm. That's why Paul says, I got to reach for the high mark mm -hmm. of the calling. Yes. Because any other place is going to torment me. So even when God won't throw me away because I missed the mark, my life is going to be tormented because I was created to do something specific and special. And when I carry this specific thing inside me, I can't touch everything. I can't be in the company of everything. I can't say everything because it does not apply or build what I was created to do. Hmm. That's in your preaching. That's in your singing. That's in your prophecy. That's in your life. That's it. When you were created for a specific task. Because God is so meticulous and particular about everything. He He tells us our whole life should be trying to align with him. Mm -hmm. Align with him. Align with him. Align with him. You're going to have people say it don't take all that. But you got to say to yourself, I know it don't take all that for you. And Come I know on. there's a general idea that it's okay for everybody else to do Help that. But right then now. he writes. He writes. He says, I'm taking the general out. Mm -hmm. And coming to what is called a specific. specific. I'm teaching. I'm teaching. Now, when he mm -hmm. first gave the law to Israel, it was a nation. Yeah. So one, it, it it was a general consensus about people. Uh -huh. Then he comes to Jeremiah 31, 29, I believe, in Ezekiel 18 to 2. He says, Say not again in Israel, the whole nation, this proverb that the fathers eat sour grape and the children teeth are sour. In other words, what the father done is going to bring a general consistency that we all suffer from the same thing, mm -hmm. right? He mm -hmm. says, no. He says, all souls are mine. Yes. But the soul that missed the mark is going to die. Not physically, but going to, to see things in his life or her life that she desired, but she never met the mark. It so is. now she's frustrated. Sin is. Keep frustrated, on. Yes, frustrated, on. frustration. Your frustration right now is because of your limited understanding in who you are. You have decided because I got a gift, I'm good enough. 
But there's others of us saying, I got a gift and that's not good enough because the life that he promised me, I'm still not living. I'm gifted and I'm blessing everybody else. But then I got to go home and cry because I missed the mark. And I'm the only one No, I'm missing the mark. Everybody else is applauding. Mm. <sighs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that brings this, this subject back up again. We will stop self-sabotaging ourselves. Mm -hmm. Because self-sabotage comes when I look at somebody else that failed or didn't meet a mark, and then I say I'm better than they are. Mm. People don't like to hear you say that. Pastor, you, you, uh, uh, just say it's challenging me. You got to make the choice whether you're going to live up to the challenge or you're going to continue to say what you say and do what you do. That's all of us. I... I, I am challenged every day with this. I am challenged every day. So now we got to go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. Look, you were created for something specific. Mm -hmm. And just as I taught about God saying to Israel, don't say your father's done, that now you are falling subject to, he says the same thing right now. Right now. I don't care what everybody else is doing. I'm calling you out. You can't stand in the midst of people that look like you, maybe perhaps born from the same mom, dad you are, born in the same house you are. Come on. You can't use that as your excuse. You have the power to excel. You have the power to make a decision and change your season. Wow. You have that power. You possess the power right now. You are not limited to anything or anybody. You are just limited in your decision mm. to follow God's alignment upon your life. Your and there gosh, is a Jesus. real yes. alignment from God. Mm -hmm. The enemy is trying to, to tell us that it's all a facade. Mm -mm. You just do what you do when you can do and however much of it you can do. The devil is a lie. You were built for specifics. Mm. And you are built in alignment with the spirit of God that dwells in you that is frustrated that you won't make a move because your flesh keeps taking the move and you giving God your ideas. Remember, he says, the, the, the plight of the greats, very few can transcend. The plight is you got a big ideal that you want God to finance. Mm. And God says sometimes that's the only reason why you want the connection you pray is when you failed in your big idea. Now you're going to connect to him, hoping that he'll finance you back to the level to where you can think again on your own. And he says this season, I need people that are ready to do what I told him to do or what I told them to do. Watch this. Watch, watch this. Because, watch this. Hear me now. Because of God's reason for creating you, great one, great one, his plan is so huge, the weight of it is too heavy for your body to carry. Even though your body want to take it and, 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 and do its thing, it can't take it. It can't take it. This is a spirit move. This is, when I say spirit move, you know what I'm saying? This is an essence move. Okay. The essence of who you are is really spirit. Mm-hmm. Your body is just here to accurately, meticulously carry out the plan of your spirit. This is why spirit understanding is so crucial. Why? Because the spirit know how to distribute mm -hmm. what needs to be done at the right time. Your body, your flesh, your idea want to do it all at the same time. Mm. So you miss a lot of things. But the spirit of you, which is the mind of God, as the scripture says, who knows the mind of a man except the spirit of man? Who knows the mind of God except the spirit? The spirit of God know when to distribute it to your body and you move at the right time according to the leading of the spirit. I'm helping somebody. This is why you must understand, unless I come in alignment with God, the weight of my call is too heavy for my body. With your speaking in tongues, self. With your, with your, with your, with your, with your, I know how to, with, I, I, boy, I know how to, I know how to, I know how to, boy, I can do this. Well, you had mercy in a past paradigm, mm -hmm. but we are shifting, we're shifting, we're shifting. Now, if you are not properly aligned in your relationship with your spirit man, hear me now, if you're not properly aligned in your relationship with your spirit man, what was sent? to bless you will completely wear you out. It will wear you out. I'm going to say it one more time so that the people in the back can hear me. It will completely wear you out. You can be a, 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 a 
prolific churchgoer and be worn out mm -hmm. by the call on your life because you don't know the proper instruction how to implement what God has said on you. This see, see people think they exempt because they don't fail to there. I'm mm -hmm. over here now. Mm -hmm. God's not concerned with me. I'm going to tell you something. David says, if I make my bed in hell, Come on. what he put on me going to find me there. Right there. And if I don't make a decision to step up out of this hell, I'm going to be tormented, not from the fire, from the refusal to adhere to what I'm called to do. I was laying in the place of the gnashing of teeth. Gnashing uh, of teeth. <laughs> you, 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 we were talking about this the other day, how the, the scripture has been so improperly uh, the, the hermeneutics of it, the, the, the context, the time frame has been so taught us that we don't have any idea what the text is talking about literally when it's explained to a first century church mm. and the and the reader revelance of the, the gnashing of teeth. Right? Mm -hmm. We always have this vivid picture of you standing in hell, uh, uh, hell and, and your teeth is gnashing. Let me explain something to you. Now, that's. That that is a reality. Later, I'm talking about the hell you in now, right where now. you don't have enough to take care of nothing, and you you bite your teeth, you 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 depressed. You want to lock yourself in a room. You 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 want the enemy to say, "Look how fell you have fallen." Yeah. Oh my God, yeah. you, you, you 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 you. So so now, what your next decision is? I'm gonna do something to get around the fire. And the, and the Lord said, that's the worst thing that you can do is do something to get around the fire. You can't get around the fire and feel better. You got to dive in with everything. You got to go for everything. I don't even know how to do this, but I'm doing it. Come on. I'm doing it. I'm jumping in. I'm, 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 making, I'm making a God move because I have made decisions. I'm gifted. This, this, this right here is for the gifted people that prophesy accurately. That's where the problem is. You will never walk into the level of God because you base everything out of your gifting. That's why Luke 4, 18 again, the, the scripture says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Why? Because he has anointed me. If I'm anointed to do something, I don't have the guidance of the spirit. I am, I am, I am fooling myself. I'm looking good to all of those that love that, but to me in my personal life, I am failing. And I can't be under the pressure of failing in my personal life because I'm gifted and I think I'm the king of the hill and everybody got to fall something to me because I got a gift. Mm. This is this is a defining moment. So 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 here's what the Lord said. There's something inside you that you need to align yourself with him. Mm -hmm. So that he can be all that he wanna be. So he can be all he listen to me. I'm talking to you. The failure has come. You trying to be all that you can be. That has a time. That's an up and down. That right there will run its course. Come on. When you trying to be all that you can be. When God says, I created you for specific purpose. The word purpose is defined as this. It is God invading, spirit of God invading my flesh to do a specific kingdom work. My flesh shouldn't rule anything. It should be the vessel or the tool by which God can finish his earthly work. As to every man that is born, man, woman, boy, and girl that is born, you got too many ideals that you want God to finance. And that's all you want God to do is wow. give you financing for your big idea. He says, now, since you've been living up there and you were falling down to here, he says, would you give me a chance to live? Hmm. There's something I created you for. And I want to I wanna live. I want to live now. I want to do my thing. And then when you seek the alignment of your life inside my kingdom program, watch mm -hmm. this. He says, Matthew 6, is applicable to your life then. What is that? If you first seek the kingdom and my righteousness concerning you, yes. all of the things that you lost yes. will be added back, back to you. But I'm not going to do it with you halfway re-entering into this relationship. Come on all the way. 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 Preacher, come on all the way. Apostle, come on all the way. Come on all the way. Come on all the way. This is not, ooh, you know what? 
I answered my call to the ministry. I guess I'm good. He says, you could have you could have stayed out. You could have stayed away from that because that's going to give you a false sense of security. Hmm. A false sense of security is the enemy telling us, you made a move. Now, God ought to be good with that. Now, you made a major step. You know, you, you never would do that. What good is that what when good? God says, I got something for you that's major? Now, you're going to settle for the acceptable substitution of life. You're going to come to this form, and we're going to give you truth here. Yes, sir. Somebody stand at the door. That's something inside you. You can't handle this unless you come into the proper information and alignment. Mm -hmm. God is not going to make you do this. Yeah. You can be tormented the rest of your life with your anointed self. You My know how many God. tormented anointed people? It is that accurate in their gift that know mm -hmm. how to call everybody else's name, but your life, you go home and sit down and cry. I've lived that. I'm not going to live that. I'm going to obey God because I have come to this conclusion that God knows more about me that I know about myself. Yes. And if he asked me for that, evidently he says I can do it. But since my flesh is going to war with my spirit, the first thing my flesh tells me is that I can't do it. Mm. And the enemy is so so deceptive. He'll tell you when your flesh say you can't that you're honoring God because I don't want to do nothing to mess up God. Mm. And now you sink back into that position called uh, underachieving. Depression comes as a byproduct of your underachievement because you got something inside you so strong that is ready to come alive and you about to come apart. Something's about to come alive and you are about to come apart. You're about to come apart. You're about to come apart. I need. I need to. Uh, let me move further in the teaching. It's good, Pastor. There. There are some of you in process right now to getting from where you are into where God has preordained you to be. And there's a process that requires decisions. Bump what you heard about it all going to fall into place. you 40 years old now and it has not fallen into place hmm. because this is a partnership that requires a decision on your end. God says, I got you if you'll make the decision. But this is going to be a tricky transition. Because your emotions are going to play part in this. Your emotions at some points are going to take over and you're going to believe that it was God telling you to make that the stupid decision. That you won't know it's stupid until you go gone through it and you sit back and say, what was I thinking? Remember, your emotions have no intellect. intellect. You're never going to make a decision when you are emotional. That's why the enemy tried to drive the church, uh, 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 want the church to be driven by what? Mm -hmm. emotions. emotions. Because emotions have no we had a real good time today. Okay, what what was accomplished? We we shouted. But mm. did that give you a word to 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 come Carry back you through what you were about come to on. be encountered or challenged with? No. Mm. So when the emotions come down, you didn't get no proper teaching on what is about to be uh, experienced. So now you feel defeated. You're not going to get whooped all week. <laughs> yes, you are not defeated because of the mercy of God. You're just depleted because mm. you didn't follow the instruction. You're not defeated. You're just depleted because you refuse to follow the instruction. You got to follow the instruction. Now, here's what God says. Let me say this. God says he's about to shift you. He's about to shift you. There's a shifting coming. Shift, shift, shift. There's a shifting coming. Now, watch what he says. And the things that you call normal will begin to go crazy. The thing that you call normal will begin to go crazy. Now, watch this. This is a tricky transition. There are people right now. That's why instruction and revelation is so important. Mm -hmm. So now, in this tricky transition, God says he's shifting you right now. You're in the middle of a shift, right? Mm -hmm. Now, watch this. In this shift, the things that you call normal will go crazy. This thing will so go goes so crazy that it'll scare you. You'll think you lose your mind. It depends on what level of shift that you're in. Now watch it. You think, oh my God, what's what, what's going on with me? Now there are scriptures to support this. Mm -hmm. Elijah was one of them. Shifted, 17th chapter of First King. He just shows up. Don't know who, what, when, where. He just shows up with a word in his mouth. Now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. In this shifty uh, 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 transition, God will allow something to be uttered out of your mouth that changes the whole world. 
And then the next thing you know is you begging for food. So, <laughs> so your normal becomes crazy. You you just prophesied under the auspices of the Holy Spirit, and now you are begging for food. What in the world is this? Mm. And now watch what God does next. He's about to work on your ego. Wow. You driving your nice car, and nobody knows that you're at the verge of losing it all. Because mm. now your norm has just gone crazy. And you about to go crazy because you think you're about to lose it all. Mm. When God says, I'm trying to turn a key, to transition you into something else. So I got to make everything around you go crazy. Go crazy. Go crazy. It's got to go crazy. Now watch this. It's going to scare you. And and when people tell you like myself that it's a God move, the, fe <laughs> the fear that you feel while I'm telling you it's a God move scares you even more. Mm. What are you talking about? This is crazy. <laughs> here's here's the problem. Here's a, here's the problem. What you have called normal was never God's normal for you. Wow. What I have settled for in my flesh and my failures, in my watch this, watch this instincts. Go instinct. We are taught instinct. Uh, follow your heart. How many times are you gonna sabotage yourself with that? Mm -hmm. Emotions have no intellect. Follow your heart. The heart is deceitful above all others. Above. Who can hmm. know it? Now, you can't answer that because if God is asking you the question, how dare you answer it? Yes. yes. That's why the enemy first uh, 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 answer to you is instinctively. What? Watch this. Instinctively. Uh, 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 watch this. Follow your heart. That is the worst sets of information that you could get. Why? 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 Because he wants you to be emotional and make a decision that affects your next season. That's what he wants. So God says, I'm trying to change what you call norm into my norm. And it's going to call for, call for a transition. And in this tricky transition, the, the enemy is going to play mind games on you. He's going to work you over. If you don't have a proper instruction. That's why you're here to hear proper instruction. Proper instruction. Proper instruction. You won't let your gift be the thing that carry you over this time. Mm -hmm. The spirit of the Lord is upon me mm -hmm. because, because he has anointed me. Spirit is not emotional. It doesn't say things and then say, okay. It doesn't speak and then say, well, now let's see. It knows the mind of God. It knows the Beginning from the end, that's in the mind of God. It knows everything. Mm -hmm. So, so watch this. When God speaks a thing, you got to know that His word is reliable, even when my eyes don't see nothing. Mm -hmm. I got to know that what He says is 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 reliable. Yes. Oh my God. Okay, okay, okay. That's why in the next season that we're embarking upon. We got to know the dichotomy between belief and faith, mm -hmm. or faith and believing. Believing, you know, the, this is why the scripture, uh, when 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 Jesus comes from the Mount of Transfiguration, there's a father that's got a son, mm -hmm. and he's he's having conversation with the nine left down below that was supposed to know. And, and and he's having Jesus said, "What's going on? What y'all talking about?" And the, and the father says, "It's me. It's me. I brought my son to your uh, 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 believers, mm -hmm. but they didn't have care, hmm. right?" And then he says, "Lord, help my unbelief." He didn't say, "Lord, I didn't have enough faith," because mm -hmm. there's a difference between believing and having faith. Yes. Can I explain? Yes. And I'm in. I'm in on that. I'm in on that. You got to come back Friday. So. Believing is the mental part of faith. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So believing is what? Mental part of faith, right? Believing is me allowing God to persuade or convince me that his word is true even when I don't see nothing. Mm -hmm. But faith is not even brought into the picture until I move upon what he see. <laughs> mm. If I don't bust the move, I can believe all day. 
Faith without works. It's just <laughs> believing. Wow. Because I've seen him do it in other people. Uh-huh. People encounter Jesus because they've seen him do it in other people. Now, Jesus says, what do you think about this? And he says, now, take up your bed. And walk. That's through your faith. Mm. That's why we have to know and understand because we are settling on something but not getting the manifestation of something. Mm. So now when I move in faith, I got to know that faith is not emotional. It's not presumptuous. It's not crazy. It's moving on what the word said in truth. Many of you never got the truth about your situation. So the moves you made in faith was not even a God move because it did not align with God's purposes in your life most of the thing god's purpose god has purpose in your life your flesh don't want to have nothing to do with it <laughs> so you have a good idea that you want god to finance and most of those good ideas that you want god to finance don't even require any faith because you already got it figured out because you are a go-getter let's end on that this is called tricky mm. transition tricky transition oh stay here because it gets even deeper than this lady mm. team this is god revealing and dropping heavy revelation because he has a major manifestation with you in mind yeah. and he says you can grab a hold to this and move next level or you cannot do it you can you you can settle and and and, and go through uh these 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 these, these phases of, of five years of excitement only to crash and burn and say, what did I just do? Mm. And don't have no idea during the time of your excitement, seem like everything is going well. At the end of that cycle, you fall down and say, man, I, 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 I left everything and lost everything. Because mm, you never let him in. He was still at the door. He was still at the door knocking. And the enemy will cause us to go through several cycles. Several cycles. And if we are not under the proper teaching, what happened? We have the fathers to keep <laughs> deluding and influencing our decision. Mm. Jesus says something. I think this is Matthew 10. Scholars will help me with this. Matthew 10. It says, he says this, and I'm in here. If you don't love me more than your father, mm -hmm. you can't be a part of what I'm doing. Now that's 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 crazy because you, I got to love you more than my father. Hmm. Lord, I love my father. He took care of me. What he's saying spiritually is this: the father is always a picture of the passed down traditions and mindsets. Mm -hmm. What we have tried to do is fit our new, fit our old thing into our new thing, and with the ideals and the pictures of the fathers. And he says, you're going to have to trust me enough that what I'm telling you, and it's going to have to be out of faith, because what I'm about to give you has never been done or seen. And if you ask someone that have done and seen, they're going to tell you that that's not way to do it, because I've never seen that. Wow. I haven't seen neither ear heard. What is about to be produced in the hearts and minds of people that love him. And he says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. We're in a shift, Lady. We're talking about that. Between an old paradigm and the new time. I know it's 2,000 years later, but we're still in the transitional. And this is the day that the Lord has required of the shift. Mm -hmm. Right? Because if I'm, the fathers would tell me to work it out, mm -hmm. and I'm going to go get it, right? Yeah. Works of obedience is what I've done in the old paradigm to get God's blessing. Mm -hmm. In the new paradigm of grace, obedience is what I do because of God's blessings. I see. <laughs> it's two different levels here. And so we got, we got to pull all of these levels, all of these things together and properly. This is going to be difficult. Because every day of your life, you are required of the Lord to inventory what you just heard. Because every day of your life, what you've always heard is going to enter your space and it's going to speak to you loudly. And you're going to have to make a decision mm -hmm. whether I'm going to go with what I know or go with what God says. 
if I go with what they told me, I will live out of his story. Mm -hmm. If I go with what God told me, I will live out of mystery. In other words, if I follow the pattern, I only know his story. Mm. And so if you do what he done, you're going to get what he got. Okay. But when I follow the instructions of Revelation, I know my story. Mm. It is opening up to a whole nother world of possibilities. And it's coming. And we're going to embrace it. And we're going to live in it. And God is going to do his thing in us. I hope you bless. Father, thank you so much. Thank you, God. For this word. Thank you so much for this word of revelation that you have allowed us. To speak into the ears of your people, ears of your people. They are here. There's a remnant that heard and going to apply. And God, you're going to give them immediate access, immediate access to the thing that has been held up that was at their door knocking and they refused to let in because they did not hear. And they're going to open up this door through their hearing and you are going to manifest in this next season of their life the thing that is going to blow their mind. It's going to blow their mind. Thank you for blowing our mind. In this time and in this season. Yes. Thank you, Father. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much. It's done. Yeah. Uh, this season won't be a bag season either. Mm. We're bagging too much to things that are in alignment. Say that again. We're begging for the things that are already on slate. Hmm. Alignment means that it's already on. That's why he says the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Hand. But it does not appear till there's a repentance. Mm -hmm. I've got to rethink to see what is already in my hand. I got to rethink some things to see, and that's going to be difficult because your your mind has already been sculptured by the old ideas. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be it's going to be different. It's the challenge of all of our lives. It's the challenge of all of our lives. It's the challenge of all of our lives. But there's something inside you that is roaring that has unlimited potential. The the the. Uh, you know, I can't, man, I got to let this go. You know, the, the Bible says we see as looking in a glass. Mm -hmm. And then it, then the Bible also speaks about it does not yet appear what uh -huh. we shall, shall be, mm -hmm. but we know that we shall be. So, so what God is actually saying there is, I will allow you to determine what it is and how large it is. Mm. It's based out of your revelation. That's why I didn't tell you what in the magnitude is because it's yet being defined. Mm. The more you get revelation of him and what he desires, the more he gives you revelation of you. That's why he says, Peter, if you can answer from what you know, not what they know, then I will give you keys to open up the doors to what? Kingdom. Mm -hmm. Something that you really stand inside of already. Mm -hmm. He didn't say, I would give you keys to kingdom. He says, I give you keys of kingdom. Two different things. Two means that you're outside trying to get in. Of means that you're inside and there are several doors. So a need to know basis as you go toward the manifestation of the whole that God has said for your life. It, it is so unlimited right now. It is so unlimited. So don't you get upset with me or her or him when you start seeing things break out. It's really not a breakout. It's really a let out. Because mm. the spirit ain't going to break out. You got to let out. The only breakout that happens in scripture is when a plague, we're not dealing with plagues, we're dealing with a let out, <sighs> not a breakout. <laughs> That's awesome. Everything we talk about in Christendom is breaking. We're going to break the back of poverty. We're going to break the, we're going to break. Listen, listen, let's let out. That's what we are. We are, we are here to let out. We ain't got to break nothing in mm. God. We're here to let things out. Amen. amen, amen For those of you that want to sow into this, mm. there is a, a, a cash app address there. There is, man, I could sit here and teach for hours. You know that already. Of things that that that, that are rumbling in, in, in the spirit realm right now that is waiting for somebody to access it. To to you know, you know, your spirit man sees so much stuff, and here's what is confusing about it. It's only a glimmer. It's just, it's just, a, it's just a, it's just a flash. It's just a flash. When we, we don't get this, man. We don't, we, you know, you know, Luke chapter four, right? Mm -hmm. 
Satan take Jesus up to a way. And in a moment shows him mm -hmm. all the kingdoms. All of the, 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 the just like a bam, all of that stuff. Now, do you think in your finite mind <laughs> that the enemy is the only one that can show you all of this in a pop, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye? Do you? Are you saying we think on the negativity and everything? Mm -hmm. If the enemy can do that, don't you know God can in a bam? And and so when 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 John three talks about us being born again or born from above, uh -huh. he says you must be born again to do what? To, to see, mm -hmm. right? To see the kingdom. See. Mm -hmm. In other words, there's so much bam that if you're not born or seen from above, you'll never see it. You'll live right in the physical and never see it. Mm -hmm. And so now the escalation of seeing to entering is. I got to open up your eyes so that you can not only see, but now you're able to enter. Mm. That's where we are. I'm done. Mm -hmm. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Sow your seeds into a word like this. This, yes. will, this will bless you. This will thank you, uh, Apostle uh, Gordon, so you can listen to our church. Don't want to listen like that no more, do they? I was told by uh, uh, Africa. Uh -huh. Remember that? Yeah. This African came to me. He heard me teach. He says, and I was conscious of the Western uh, uh, so, the hours yeah, and uh, the time. And so I said, we can't say in church over, oh, we say an hour and 45 minutes because the attention span of people are gone after that. That's what we thought. Mm -hmm. And so the guy, he says, I love to hear you teach. He said, but I have one problem. I said, what is the problem? I said, here we go. I'm too long winded. He says, no, where I come from, you need to have at least 10 hours. <laughs> Or you haven't done anything. And I said, 10 hours? He says, yes. If we're going to walk from when we walk to hear you, we don't need you done. And no, we need you to go all the way in. I said, man, that ain't going to work over here. I said, let's go to your country. He says, let's go. <laughs> wow. Then he tell me that. Then he tell me that. And so, and so, and so we, we, we are, we are not, we're not going to go to no 10 hour form yet. <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to 10 hour form yet. We are going to teach the word of God, but you can't take this moment for granted. Too many people taking these moments for granted because we are not on uh, the stage of uh, what they look for, itch and ear stage. Mm -hmm. Many in this next season are going to miss. You, a lot of you are going to be missed because God is hiding his best gifts in the piles of unpopular stuff. And so you have to determine within your own heart. I don't care who... I don't think hear me. I'm gonna teach it if 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 it's one of y'all to hear, because my blessings don't come from you. It comes from the obedience that I have to God. Yes. And won't God do it? Amen. Won't, won't he will? Won't he will? Pastor. Won't he will? He yes, won't he, he won't will. he take care of you from all sources and places and and you help people giving to you that don't even why why am I giving this to you? What, what? Why? You help people saying to you, it's something about you that I like and I don't even know who you are. You have people stopping when you're riding your motorcycle and saying the Lord says he's He's over your life. Who are you? I'm from the north side of North Carolina. I just came up here and passing through, but the Lord told me to tell you. Well, don't, won't, he, won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? So I want to say this to every one of you that are laboring in God's plan for your life. Don't you worry about the popular not seeing what you do. There are some people out there that's in poverty. You might not get the popular, but you got some people yes. that are in poverty. Come on. That are hearing you. And God is blessing you according to your obedience to that gift. Y'all, I am out of here again. I need y'all to go to my YouTube page. I need y'all to go to my YouTube page. I need everybody on the sound of my voice to subscribe right now. There it is. There it is. There it is. Go to our YouTube page. Y'all need to subscribe to that page. I need y'all. Facebook is not going to stop me, and they're not going to limit me. I'm going to YouTube and all the other social media platforms. This word is going to get. What happens when you... Download my YouTube page and subscribe to it. When I put the blurps on of, of information and revelation, it might be five minutes. You can get it and boom. And you have family that are not on social media. Mm -hmm. So what you can do is copy the URL and send it straight to their phone. They can click their phone and their phone come with YouTube on there. And when they click the, 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 the button, it comes up. They hear the teaching. This word has got to get out. Now, what happens? Whenever you share the word of God with somebody else, even if you didn't preach it, you have just shared the gospel. Come on. Whatever. Blessed are the feet. Blessed are your feet. <laughs> because you shared it.
you you help the gospel get out. God blesses you accordingly. God blesses you accordingly. Thank you so much, Gary Johnson. Thank all you guys, uh, uh, Bree and Joel, uh, 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 Pastor Gary Johnson, uh, Priscilla, our bounce back money. <laughs> I'm excited about Tell Q Sam. <laughs> uh, David and Tanya Boyd, Tamisha Gayton, and of course, uh, 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 Apostle Philip Gordon, bless you, man. Bless you. Apostle Ronetta Rockamore, happy birthday to you yesterday. Happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday. Uh, uh, Michelle Crater Grice, thank you so much, Michelle. On the way to subscribe as soon as I get through speaking. Come on. Thank That's you. That's what's up. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michelle. And thanks for your support. Pastor G at Network of Believers, YouTube. Yeah. 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 Uh, who else is in, in, in uh, uh, Natrice Gordon? Thank you so much. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much, Jessica Green. Now Jessica got something coming up. We're gonna we're gonna announce that. You she sent us something. Is it, was she speaking on that? Mm -hmm. We're gonna look at this thing after this, Jessica. Dummy, Dummy Burrow. That's our. Thank you, Lord. Yes, <laughs> as as Lady said, that's our. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Uh, Sylvia Starch Brown, blessings. Robbie Whitmore, blessings. Chucka Welt King, blessings, man. Blessings on blessings. Out of Whitmore. Out of Whitmore, my mama, blessings, mama. Raquel Moore, blessings. Uh, who is who is who is who is this? Is that it, baby? Apostle, you said him, Philip Gordon. Yes. Nigel. Nigel Higgins. Higgins, bless you, girl. Jabari Ashley Williams, Evans. Ashley Evans. That's our daughter. Our baby. Blessings. Kit K Cat. Blessings. Who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Marcus Devine. Blessings, my brother. Baby, my brother. Yeah. Von oh, that's Philip Gordon's mom. Uh 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 Natrice in Gordon. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you, you for mom. tuning in, Mom. Von Tally. Von Tally. Blessings, Von. That's our guy. That's our guy. Yeah. For real. Katrina Robinson. Blessing. Blessing. Is that it? Do you have anybody else? I'm gone. I'm, a, I'm as far as I can go. Sylvia Stark. Kim Sneed. Blessings. You say Sylvia, Sylvia Stark. Stark. Yes, that's Sylvia. Yes. Teresa. Hey. Smith. Johns. Johns. Hey. John. Hey. Johns. Hey, hey there. Hey. Is that who I think it <laughs> yes, is? Yes, it is. is bless Man, blessings to you. Who else? Who else? I got to speak blessings up on you. Marissa and Pastor Nolan, blessings, blessings. Yes, is that it? it looks We're almost like there. It. We're almost there. We're almost there. I like to, I like to say blessings to people. I love when Pastor Philip Gordon is here, don't you? Yes. Camille, blessings. He, he, <laughs> he, amen. That word done. Amen, amen. Thank you guys. We love so, y'all. Blessings, Pastor oh, Nolan. Blessings. Pastor yes. Nolan. Pastor Nolan. Thank you for your seed song. Thank you for your seed song. Now he's our one hundred. He's our Dallas. Him and Marissa are our Dallas pastor, but they are. We got some good uh, uh, assistant pastors. Pastor Joel and wonderful and, and, and Sister Bree Sweetie. Yeah, Bree, Bree Sweetie. I mean, some great people. We love you guys so much. All right, my friend Bishop Stephen Arnold and the Grace. Church. I enjoyed you last night, man. I tuned in today Tuesday night. Our service. Amen. 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 All right. Are we? Are we? Are we done? We done. We done. Thank you guys so much again. My YouTube page. A uh, go and subscribe there. Pastor G at Network of Believers. Pastor G at Network of Believers. I need everybody that's listening on the side of my voice. You need to be subscribing to my YouTube page. It's a blessing to me and as well as to you. What we're going to do is say blessings on blessing. Blessings. See you Friday. Blessings on blessings. Oh, tomorrow morning. night. In the, morning, in the morning, 6 a.m. Eat early tomorrow affirmation night. with Lady T. Early affirmation with Lady T. 6 a.m. in the morning for you early risers. Boom. It gets your day started out. And then tomorrow night, Thursday evening, inspiration to what me. We are always saying something because God wants you to be inspired yes. to do something. And so we are excited about every opportunity. Other than that. Blessings, blessings on blessings on blessings on blessings on blessings on blessings, on blessings. On blessings. On blessings.